The following is paid programming. It's time to talk taxes. New friends, new opportunities, new partners. EG Tax. It's Ask the Tax Lady with Esther Gullius and EG Tax on News Radio 930 WBEN. To reach Esther now, call 803 0930. Toll free at 1 800 616 9236. And cell calls are free at Star 930. And now, live from the WBEN studios, it's Esther Gullia. Hey, everybody, this is the tax lady, and this is our hour to talk taxes. And so we invite you to give us a call. It's so much more fun when you're part of the show. And, of course, our phone number is 803-0930, 803-0930, star 930 on a cell phone. We're in the last quarter, kids, before uh, the end of 2018. So we're going to give you some tips today. We're kind of doing po- potpourri uh today to give you some some things to think about but thinking is it, it doesn't win the race in taxes you got to do so uh and of course i'm joined in studio we're back in the studio this week from uh, last week with uh, when we were out at the eastern hills mall at the buzz seminar i have tiffany fabian hey tiff hey there esther happy saturday happy saturday to you and christopher fabian hello esther hello christopher um okay so what do you guys want to talk about you got something before we get into the, our potpourri yeah well i just want to say thank you to everybody who showed up and helped uh last saturday we had a great time our staff came and helped at the corporate office Um, John DeShulo at WBBZ was outstanding. Uh, We had Dennis Kitchen, great thanks to him. Uh, uh, Jeff Boron. um, Jeff Katz. Katz, Judy Jack uh, Lewis. Judy Jack Lewis. The list goes on and on and on. I just want to say thank you. And then don't forget, if you still want to sign up for our tax school, we have a Saturday class and an online class. It's not too late to register. Uh, You learn taxes from A to Z. And our hope is that you become an employee Great opportunity, lots of fun. So if you're interested, go to our website at EG Tax. It's a wonderful school. Yeah, it's a a really good school. You know, yesterday, um, I was kind of feeling, you know, I'm totally not a gambler. Right. But a billion dollars made it interesting. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So I don't even know where you go I'm really glad nobody got it because I'm still I'm I'm gonna try this week. How do you how do you do the Mega Millions? You go to like a Seven Eleven or and you a just grocery say I want store. a Mega Millions. You want yes. a Mega Million? Yeah. And how many numbers? Well, you now it's a Mega Billion. Well, how many numbers you got to come up with? Well, they, you don't even have to. You can do a quick draw. They'll they'll pick your numbers for you. Or, or, or you can pick, I think you, it's six numbers. You fill out a form, yep. don't you? You yep. fill out a little form with bubbles. Well, for a billion dollars, you know, yeah. I, all I know is, you know, how then they think, what would I do with a billion dollars? Well, after the taxes, it's only going to be like 600,000, right? 600 million. Only. So, oh, well, I know that's true. All right. Anyway, <laughs> and then the other thing is uh, the sexual harassment. If you're working for an employer and they haven't come up with the sexual harassment policy, in the state of New York, it's, it's now law, and I was just telling my brother today about the 10-second rule, and a lot of people don't know what that is. You're not allowed to look anybody in the eyes for more than 10 seconds. Which is unbelievable no, because... against what I was raised as. Go that's on. what I was oh, going to say. That's what you're taught to do is look so someone if, in if the you eye. you find that we don't look at you anymore, it's because we uh, can't. New York State's new sexual harassment training, and that's part of the thing we don't, we can't look at you because... Believe me, we're not lusting after you. But I just thought, oh, my gosh, I oh, can't yeah. believe it. Oh, anyway, yeah. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax, 803-0930, 803-0930, star 930 in the cell phone. And why don't we go right to the phones, and then we'll go to our potpourri. And we have Sue. Hey, Sue, how can we help you? I have a question regarding a required minimum distribution. Yep. Uh, earlier on a different show, uh, the gentleman was talking about um, if you're 70 and a half mm-hmm. and still working and contributing to a 401k or 403b from your employer, that you do not have to include that amount into your RMD um, calculation. All right. It, you have to do a required minimum distribution on all of your qualified accounts. Uh, including your IRAs and, and your uh, pensions, provided you are still not actively uh, working 
in a pension, in, like let's say you're still working at ABC Corporation and still contributing to your 403B or 401K, that you don't have to do your RMD. But the rest of everything else that's in your portfolio, once you reach age 70 and a half, uh, would have to do the required minimum distribution. Oh, okay. So that's, that can be um, a significant dollar amount, too. Yeah. It can. It can. Yeah. As a matter of fact, they're, they're bouncing around right now, uh, making it so that uh, people that uh, don't have a large pension plan uh, don't have to take money out of their RMD. So that's one of the things that they're talking about on tax reform uh, 2.0. So we'll keep you abreast on that as well. The other thing is, uh, and it's in our potpourri here, if you have to do the RMD out of your uh, IRA, what can they do to avoid paying taxes altogether? They could uh, so roll it over to a charitable organization. Right. So yeah. if you're somebody that's charitable, let's say you give $5,000 a year to church or some special charity and your required minimum distribution is uh, 5000 you can actually do a direct rollover from your IRA to that charity. It is not taxable to you and it stays off of your tax return, saving you money in all kinds of ways, right? Correct. Uh, on their, on their um, star exemption yep, on the taxable Social Security. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, and it could also save you money for your Medicare insurance through Social Security. That's exactly right. So, great question. Thank you for calling. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax 8030930. 8030930, star 930 in the cell phone. And we, we have a bit of news. Something happened this week on Monday. Yeah, Chris, go ahead. Do the we, honors. We finally closed on our new corporate corporate office. So hopefully in about three weeks, we will be moving in and every it's, it's a great building, you know, a nice- And we have parking. We have parking. We have parking. For those of you lovely clients that uh, came to us on Niagara Falls Boulevard, we're still going to retain that office, but uh, most of our staff is going over to the new corporate office. But we only had parking for like 13 cars, so it was like- uh, car, uh, car parking roulette. It was just terrible. Now this place has parking for like 40 cars, so it's wonderful. Yeah, it's on three acres, so if we had to, people could even park we'll on the grass. We'll do a picnic, too. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the address of the building? 1890 Colvin in Tonawanda, New York, right. right by the big airplane, the blue airplane. By the Veterans blue airplane. Park. Right? Yep. Yep. Okay, so before we go to break, let's start talking about some, I have like 14 things that um, I think you should start thinking about if you haven't thought about it already. Uh, number one is debt cancellation. A lot of people see these commercials on TV that say that they can, um, that you can get out of your debts, you can pay pennies on a dollar, da, 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 da. And debt cancellation is taxable, correct? Yep, it is. It goes on line 21 of the 1040 page one and it's taxable. So let's say you have $20,000 that you owe to a MasterCard and you agree to pay 15,000, that $5,000, that difference is taxable unless. But there is an exception. Yep. If you could have qualified for a bankruptcy and you didn't go bankrupt because you have less assets than you have debt, then you can do a special form to get out of the taxability. So this is very important for those of you thinking that you know, you're know you heavy laden with debt, um, even though your uh, debt cancellation potentially is taxable and you will get a uh, form that says it's taxable, there is a way around it and that's by doing the special form. And the form number is? 982. 982. And we have a nice worksheet right on our website if people want to see if they're insolvent or not. It's right there. And it's a yeah, fill so, in the blank. You know, insolvent and sounds like a big word. But really, a bad word. You, but. You say, as a matter of fact, I was just working with somebody the other day. He has no assets, but he has about $100,000 in debt. That's an insolvent person. He doesn't look insolvent. Nobody would know it when they look at him. But when you take a look financially at your assets and your liability, you find out you have more liability than you have assets. Yeah. And so technically, you'd be able to do that form and get out of um, paying the taxes if you, if you had a debt cancellation. Of course, if you have a bankruptcy, then it's not taxable at all. And then don't forget that that income that you put on line 21 on the federal is also taxable on New York, on New State. York State. So right. that can Correct. be an ouch. Correct. Well, let's take our first break. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady, 8030930, 830930, star 930 in a cell phone. We'll be back on the other side. I don't know 
Oh, Frank, that sounds like a game show uh, theme. <laughs> Right? I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady. Guess your yes. taxes. Yes, that's right. Guess your taxes. So we're talking about potpourri, and if you have uh, any questions uh, regarding taxes or your money, give us a jingle, 803-0930, star 930 on your cell phone. All right, second little tip of the day is you were listening to Judy Jack Lewis, uh, who's one of our sponsors. She's absolutely an absolute great real, realtor, and one of the important things is dealing with a professional in any situation, but she's great. But the sale of your personal residence is what people don't realize, is you can sell your home every two years, and the first half a million dollars of gain is tax-free if you're married following a joint return, 250000 if you're single. So think about it. You could buy a house uh, for 150000 put 50000 in improvements. You got an adjusted basis of 200000 sell it for 300000 That $100,000 gain is tax-free if you lived in the house as your personal residence for at least two out of five years. And you can do that your whole life. And think of all that tax-free money that's growing uh, on your behalf. And if you don't mind moving, it's a great way to help your finances. Yeah, what a great opportunity because there's not many opportunities where you can have tax-free income. And, you know, now, you know, you make hay while the sun shines. I was talking to a couple of people uh, at our seminar last week, and they were saying, gee, you know, it's I hate to sell, but it seems so tempting. All you know is today. And today, yeah. the real estate market is hot. I've seen many people who've thought, oh, I, I don't want to, I'll do it next year. Well, next year, it may be the, the whole market situation could change. So something to think about to get tax-free income, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about student loan interest. Okay. Uh, student, student, it's still deductible, up to $2,500 per tax return. So that, that, that is good. Um, it's, however, however, no more using your home equity loan to pay it off early and deduct your home equity loan. Right, because now it has to be acquisition indebtedness or indebtedness to improve uh, your home or change uh, the structure of your home. Otherwise, it's not going to be deductible anymore. So you want to make sure that uh, if you have a student loan through, like, who, who's some of the... Sally Mae, Nelnet. Right. Uh, that would be deductible up to $2,500, but those parents who have thought, I'll use my home equity to pay it off, if you did, that's not going to be deductible anymore on your Schedule A. Okay? Right. Yep. Yep. Okay, why don't we go to the phones, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone, and I think we have Holly, right? Yep. Yes. Hey, hey yes. Holly. Hi. Um, yeah, I was going to ask, um, who w uh, would you recommend for, I have two adult children that have, um, that are in debt. It's primarily student loans, but also, you know, like credit cards. So I was going to ask you, but it sounded like you guys were talking about a form, too. Um, okay, we'll do the form at tax time because they're going to get a debt cancellation form. Okay, yeah. if they do a bankruptcy, then there's not even going to be a form that's issued. But uh, our, the one of our sponsors, Dennis Kitchen, he specializes in debt consolidation, debt uh, in debt forgiveness, bankruptcies, um, and so I'd suggest you give Dennis a call. Uh, because he does an absolute great job. His phone number is what? 631-5661. Or, yeah, and there, there's also other options, too. There's, like, consumer credit counseling. Um, there's filing bankruptcy. Um, right, but Dennis can help you with that. And right. anyway, yeah. when you do a bankruptcy, you have to go to counseling anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yep. right. and, and the student, unfortunately, though, Holly, student loans cannot be included in a bankruptcy. Right, but there is a way around it. Like, for instance, if your children are become disabled, or for, and anyone listening whose children are disabled or unable to work, if they have government that, loans. that student loan can be forgiven. And there's also the 10-year rule, correct? Yeah, if you work for a nonprofit organization and you have government or federally uh, subsidized loans, after 10 years, they can be potentially forgiven. You have to pay um, your amount that's equal to the minimum amount per month. And after 10 years, if you work for a non-for-profit, the rest is poof, gone, all right, potentially. So let me interpret what Tiff said. This is, this is my interpretation, all right? <laughs> so if you're working for a non-for-profit, which would be like any governmental agency, hospital, 
uh, charity, you, if you're with them for 10 years and you're making your payments on time, after you, now you have to first call Nelnet, right, Tiff? Yep, yep, you have to call the government agency that you have and your you loans And you say, through. hey, I'm working for uh, Buffalo General, right? Mm -hmm. I'm working for the Niagara County School District. I'm working for the city of Buffalo, and we know that's bankrupt. That's a not-for-profit. Uh, but anyway, um, all of those kind of all those kind of agencies, you let them know, and if you keep making your payments for 10 years, at the end of 10 years, your debt, your, your student loan interest is forgiven. Yep. Yep, right. yep. And someone actually told me now there's new ones for teachers in New York State. As long as you agree to teach in a in a low income area and you work there for four years, your loan oh will be gosh, forgiven. That's even better. Yep. Yeah. And yep. then I, I want to also tell Holly if she missed any of it to call our office at six three two seven eight eight six. And we'll give you information on how to help your kids get out of debt. I mean, Esther always says really rightfully so. We don't live in a country where there's a debtor's prison. There's lots of options. Just uh, make a plan and, and proceed with the yeah, plan. And sometimes, really, all it is, it's like being an ostrich. You put your head in the sand and yes. you go, well, yes, nobody's coming to take me away today, so I'm not going to deal with it. It's really best to deal with it, and we will help you deal with it. As a matter of fact, last week, uh, we had somebody that was one of our uh, guests who said that he was way behind in, in filing returns, and now we helped him to get straightened out. We help with that too, obviously. That's our bread and butter. Um, and, and he'll never, he'll never yeah, miss I, filing a tax return. I, I think we actually did four people last year where we did six years worth of returns during the week last, yep. last week. Yep, so yep. you're not alone if you're out there. That's right, and and we just missed the filing deadline, the extension deadline last last Monday. So I'm Astro Golius, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star nine thirty in the cell phone. We got a couple calls holding here, but I want to also talk about uh, under potpourri. Don't gift away your home. Use a life estate instead. Why? Yeah, because when you inherit a house, you get the stepped up basis. However, if you gift a house, it goes back to the original basis. And the original basis can will be probably much less than the stepped up basis. So it's much better to have somebody inherit a house than to gift a house. Right. And so when you do a life estate, mom or dad get to live in the house. The taxes still go to mom and dad. At mom and dad's right. They get the star exemption, da 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 da, da. But... Um, Upon the death of that parent, the, and 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 by the way, the nursing home doesn't take it. Upon the death of the parent, the child gets the stepped-up basis. So if the house was worth, maybe mom and dad paid forty thousand for it when they bought it, put twenty thousand in repairs. Now their adjusted basis is sixty. But upon their death, it was sold for two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand is your basis because you did a life estate, and so there'll be no taxable gain. And that's very important, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, let's go to the phones and let's talk to Sherry. Hey, Sherry, I'm Esther Goliath. How can I help you? Hi, I have uh, an investment property and uh, I've been asked to hold a mortgage on it. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering what my tax responsibility would be on the interest on the loan as well as the mortgage payments. Okay, so how long did you have this as an investment property? Was it rented or did you just buy it and hold it and never rented it out? It is rented. It was rented. For how many years? A couple of months. Oh, okay. So you're, you're, buy, you're pretty much buying it and flipping it is what's happening, right? Yeah, it sounds like it. Okay, so is there going to be a gain? Ten, but... Is there a gain on it after you pay all the expense of sale? Um, yes. There so is. after you pay the realtor, the attorney, your transfer taxes yep. and everything, and your the money you put into fixing it up, and the expense to purchase, you still make money? Yes. Okay. So Chris, Tiff, you want to tell her about the installment sale? Right. Well, good news, sort of. <laughs> you are the interest will be taxable every year you receive it um, then you're going to have do what's called an installment sale form on your tax return and the gain is going to instead of paying your gain in one year you're going to pay that gain prorated over the life of that loan because but every what she should do she should wait for a year though to sell it correct right because then it would be considered long term, long -term. 
Right. So if you sell it be before a year is up, then that's going to be a short-term gain. It's going to be fully taxable at your tax rate. But if you sell it as a capital asset, if you can drag it out for a 12-year period, even if you let them do an early occupancy and you charge them rent or whatever you're going to do, um, what, what you do is if you hold it for a year, then sell it and hold the mortgage, then you get the lower uh, capital gains rate uh, because it'd be capital gains. And if you're in the 15% bracket or lower, you pay zero in capital gains to the federal government. So it's a big, big savings. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So make sure and again, you pay attention. I, and like Tiff says, give us a call at 632-7886. That's our corporate headquarters. Or you can go online at egtax.com. And we're very happy to answer any questions online uh, if you type it in. Or call the office, and we're very happy to help you. And there's no charge for, for uh, information. Correct? Correct. Correct. Well, congratulations. It's always wonderful to see somebody being an entrepreneur. Yes. Okay, I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady. I guess we had a break for news. I'll see you on the other side. Hey, I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax 8030930. 8030930 star 930 cell phone if you want to be part of the show we always <clears throat> love to hear what you guys have to say and we're kind of dealing with miscellaneous things you should think of and it's interesting on my list right now it's the next thing was selling capital assets when we were just talking about the, the lady before the news break about making sure that when you sell something that you hold it for more than a year in order for it to be long-term capital gain because Again, if you're in the 15% bracket or less, you pay zero taxes on the sale of, of the gain. If you are in, if you're under the 35% bracket, you pay 15%. And if you're in the top bracket, you pay only 20%. So you can see that it's a gigantic saving. So whenever you can sell a capital asset, you save money versus an ordinary. Uh, and then I just want to say, as you said, Esther, there's a text. It says the lady on the phone is not saying she's going to sell it, but she said she's going to hold the mortgage. So that means she's it. that means she's selling it. I just yeah. wanted to clarify for that texter. Yeah, if you're if you're holding a mortgage, it means you sold it. Yeah, right. So uh, a lot of times people think that they didn't sell it because they're holding the mortgage and the the title hasn't transferred yet. If you're holding the mortgage, it means that you are acting as the bank. Yeah. So. That, but any, again, anyway, good, again, good uh, sa capital assets are really important. Long-term capital assets save you money. On the state of New York, does it save you any money? Not at all. Nope. Mm -hmm. Nope. Not, not at, all. at all. And I know people are going to be going out there. It's 12% now, not 15%, where you pay no tax, the tax rate, because right. of the that's, new taxes. That's correct. That's correct. But that's the way they have it written in the law. The other <laughs> thing is, um, I was talking to somebody the other day who did a Roth conversion when they were in the 35% tax bracket. Ooh, ouch. And so I said, you know, that's that's the perfect example of, of our government. People are encouraged to, they were encouraged to roll over their money from a traditional to a Roth because a Roth will never be taxed, but then they pay tax, taxes at a much higher rate than they'd be taxed now. So you have to really be careful if you're doing a Roth conversion from a traditional to a Roth because many times um, you're not going to pay tax. You're not going to pay taxes on that money anyway once you retire. So people don't realize like the first twenty some thousand dollars of income you take out of your uh, that you get once you retire at seventy and a half. Um, isn't going to be taxed anyway, so you have to factor that in. Uh, we and had a situation the other day where somebody was going to put like a million dollars into a traditional IRA, but they thought a Roth would be better. A uh, as a traditional IRA, they would have saved about 200000 in taxes. If they put it in a Roth, they save nothing. But when they take the money out, if they annuitize it, they wouldn't have paid taxes anyway. So they kind of shot themselves. They're going to shoot themselves in the foot. Right. And so again... And I know, I'm sorry, Chris, I'm going on and on. But anyway, call us. Yes, Chris. I was going to say, and this year, there's no more, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. Let's convert it back Re to, recharacterize. recharacterize it back to the yeah, like traditional IRA. Right. Yep. Okay, let's go to Richard. Hey, Richard, how, how are you? How can we help you, sir? Yeah, I'm thinking of uh, 
taken money out of an annuity. Okay. And it would be less than the $20,000 limit for the state tax. Okay. Would I escape taxes on that? All right. So, Richard, what other source of income do you have besides that annuity? What other sources? Mm -hmm. Many. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good for you. I mean, if it weren't for the, 20, the money that you're going to take out of the annuity, yes. what do you think your other sources of income without your Social Security would what total? total on your tax return? Oh, it's probably about not counting Social Security. Not counting Social Security. I don't know, about 25 or 30. Are you, are you single, gentlemen, or Yeah, married? I'm single. Okay, so are these other sources of income pensions from other sources? Well, I got, I got an IRA, and I'm, I got to take a required amount out of that. Right. And, and how about any other pensions that you have? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got a another pension. Is that from a government source, like the city of Buffalo or Erie County? A union pension. Union pension. All right. So I'm assuming that your pensions are already up to the twenty thousand. No, this is the reason I'm thinking. How how much under twenty are they? The pensions alone. Probably about eight, uh, seven or eight thousand. All right. So whatever is left between how much you're excluding in New York State yes. for your 20000 is going to also be, uh, will come up to that 20000 on that money that you're taking out of the annuity. Now, on the annuity, I'm assuming you put after-tax dollars in there, so not everything's going to be taxable. No. I bought the annuity. And I know. Was, what did you put into the annuity originally? I put uh, probably a hundred and. Fifty thousand. And how much is it worth now? Double that, maybe. Okay, so that means that fifty percent of every approximately fifty percent of what you take out is going to be taxable. Well, so you, you got to you got to be careful. There's some annuities that take out the taxable first. Well, that's true. But I thought uh, the uh, first amount you take out of these in this is going to be taxable. That's correct. Fully taxable. That's correct. So oh. if you take out ten, then <laughs> and you've used up seven on the, I mean, and you've used up thirteen thousand on your other pensions, then you're going to have seven that you're going to be able to take out on New York State. So if you want to work it out exactly, call us on Monday and we'll tell you exactly how much you can take out of your annuity okay. uh, so it's tax-free on the state. But part of the question is, when I read some of the rules, it says if if I bought the, the annuity, it might not be able to do this. In other words, it might not qualify under that 20,000 rule? No, it would qualify. So it's called an annuity, and I can take 5,000 out of there. Yeah, so why don't you do this? Yeah. Uh, on a radio show is not the place to I make know. this kind of decision. Just give us a call on Monday. There's no charge. We can go specifically into your situation, okay? Yeah, Esther. Okay, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Thank and you for calling. You, you know, and one thing, he's worried about the state, but if he's taking extra money now out of the annuity, it could also trigger more Social Security to be taxable on, on, on his federal. On his federal, right. So, so that's why. It's calling so, on Monday is I a mean, good thing. It, we love to help people, but I don't want people to make a, a real financial decision without going over all the details because it's kind of like if you hop on your left foot, maybe your right foot has something to do with it. So you got to <laughs> be very careful about what you're doing because taxes are very complicated mm -hmm. and we don't want you to um, we don't want you to make a mistake. Right? right. All right. Let's go back to the phones. 8030930. 8030930 star 930 on a cell phone and we have Georgie wait, waiting. Hey George. Hello. How are, how are you? you sir? Good. Um had a quick question for you. Um both my wife and I are senior citizens. Okay. And I'm in uh in the process of filling out the application for the partial tax exemption for real estate property, uh the RP467 form for, for the STAR program. Um well, that's my question. I, I guess I well, I'm kind of confused. Yes. I I do have the star uh, enhanced, but this is for I believe is this is this for this for uh, for a partial exemption on on county tax. I've never heard of anything on the county tax. What was that form again? It was RP four six seven. Okay, I. Esther. You know what? Why don't you? Um, 
we're, what we're, we're looking the at other thing right we'll now. do is we will we will do the research for you so if you want to just you can email me all that information or I go to my website and e get me all it the used to be um, wait it used to be the enhanced star application okay but he already has but you already, he said he already has. You're right right so I don't know why they're having Did you, you just do buy the house uh, about a year ago Okay, so it is, it probably yeah, maybe, is a star exemption. Yeah, I mean, you may want to check with the town uh, just to make sure you are still in the enhanced star. If not, you may need to do this. Right, because any new purchases require that the, that you apply. Okay. So that may be why they sent it to you. No, they didn't send it to me. I, I was doing my own research online looking for... Uh, okay, yeah, call the city because um, uh, if you already have it, you're not going to get it again. Okay. And and did you fill it out online? I know for a brand new house, you have to go to. New that's York the regular. City. That's yeah. yeah that's regular and, star. But, but that's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All Again, right. Again, and if you need our help, you can call us at six three two seven eight eight six. Go to our website at egtax.com. We'll call you. Uh, but the whole thing is, uh, and it never hurts to double check with the town and say, I have this form, and they would say, Oh, well, you already got it, and that's good. Then you know that you're that you're good but if you don't and they say oh no you have to fill that out you'll know you'll know to do it never hurts to be over cautious exactly especially when it's saving money <laughs> hey, thanks for the call i'm esther Golius, the tax lady from eg tax 8030930 8030930 star 930 in a cell phone okay the other thing on my potpourri list is make sure if you have a small business or rental property uh, uh mm -hmm. or an s corp uh, that you maximize your net profit if you want the pass-through. But it's very, the pass-through deduction is basically 20% over and above your itemized deductions of the net profit that you have from all of your businesses and rental properties all netted together, 20% will be a deduction. But the thing is, you really have to make a decision as to what, whether you want to increase the uh, pass-through deduction or decrease your net profit and save FICA. And I have an example here. Let's say your business makes 50000 and you purchase $20,000 in equipment. You have the right to do a 179 expense and write off um, that, that $20,000. That would, save, that would uh, then uh, save you FICA and income taxes but if you, uh, and the savings would be, let's see, would be uh, $5,060. But if you keep it without doing the, the dep depreciation, if you take the slowest depreciation, you'll save $1,000 using the pass-through. The difference is you still get the deduction in the future, but in this first year, you actually pay more because of FICA and income taxes. So you have to sit down with your accountant and say, when we're planning, do we want to do the pass through or do we want to get the reduction in taxes and FICA? Because if you get the deduction now in the 179, that's all written off and you don't have it in the future. So it that kind of decision planning is so important. You want to sit down with your accountant and understand what you're doing, right? Right, right. right. Anytime it property, this is now an option too. Right. Yep. I was going to say, anytime you have depreciation, you should really look at the numbers and see what you're projected and what's going to be the best course of action for That's you. Right. And again, just because you uh, you say, well, no, I don't really want to pay the three thousand dollars in taxes this year, and want everybody would understand that next year you'll pay more because you've gotten rid of your your deduction. Right. Because you front end loaded it. Okay, let's go back to the phones. And oh, no, I think we have to take a break right now. We're going to take a break right now. We'll be right back with Mary and Greg and your calls on the other side. Hey, Frank, that's that's very that's rock screamy. like a hurricane. That's rock, very rock screamy. Like a hurricane. You know, it's interesting listening to the music. Anybody that gets a chance to go see A Star is Born, that was one of the best movies I ever saw. Wasn't that great? Lady Gaga, it was great. She was just great. Oh, anyway. And, and, I, and she's and not an actor. To, I mean, me? she's not an actress. That's Oh, my God. She's but great. she really did a so great we got job. Mary, Greg, and Linda, but before we get to them, and this is really important, if you have a C corporation and it's maybe your net profit is ten, fifteen thousand dollars 15000 you really 
owe it to yourself to move to an S Corp. It's not hard to do. A couple little forms you got to fill out. First of all, you'll redu it won't be double taxation. But the other thing is, last year you might have paid 10% on your net profit. This year the flat rate is 21%. Do it now do and it. we'll help you. All yeah. right, let's go back to the phones. And we got Mary. Hey, Mary, how can we help you? Mary. Hi, Mary. Mary. Hello. Hi, Mary. Uh, listen, I, I, I have one question. Uh, I'm calling in regard to a parish bingo. What is the recent ruling on that? Well, I mean, it's not a recent ruling. Income uh, from gambling, if you win, is taxable. And, and you have to keep, and we want to, we want to talk about that anyway, right, Chris? You want to Definitely. make sure people mm -hmm. understand that they keep a log, right? Right, right. Yes. Yeah, so Mary, yeah, that would, your winnings would be count as income on line 21 and your losses, if you itemize, go on your schedule A. Regardless if it's parish. Regardless if it's parish, New York State, Canadian, whatever, however you gamble, it's going to count as income. The, the is what, Mary? Is that a certain amount of money that's taxable every dollar you win from gambling is taxable then you get to reduce it by your gambling expense up to the income but only if you itemize so if you're a non itemizer you're going to get shot in the foot I didn't hear that last part I'm sorry so if you are someone who can't itemize you're going to end up paying taxes on all the income that you received even though you lost it oh, okay okay Mary and then uh, I'm calling for my mother, 88 years old. How long does she have to, you know, apply? A file taxes? A file, it's the word. For, for as long as she has um, income uh, in her category. So she'd be about $13,500 in taxable income before no she'd way. have to file. Then I'm just wondering what I should do. I appreciate your help. Thanks. All right. So call us. We'll be very happy to help you. Thanks, Mary. You know, and going back to what you want me to say, Esther, was now, you know, people who go to the casino all the time go and they, you know, they just get their win-loss statement. Well, I was, in at an, I was at an audit during the week, and the auditor here in town said her boss does not take win-loss statements as proof of losses. So he wants to see a daily log of, I went to the casino with $150, I came home with $20. I went with $150, came home with $180. So you have, that's what they want for proof when you come home. I don't know so, how that... And so to avoid problems in the future, if you're somebody that goes to the casino or wherever you gamble, make sure you get yourself a little log book and say, uh, today's uh, October 20th, I'm going, you know I'm going to go to get that mega million. <laughs> I know, I was thinking that. I'm going to go get that Keep mega track million. of that mileage. I know. Yep, and that mileage is going to be deductible. Well, that would be something. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to line two, and we got Linda from Tonawanda. Hey, Linda. Hi. Um, I believe a couple of weeks ago you had a man on that was um, promoting, in a way, um, in health insurance for like twenty dollars. Yeah, we, we, we're not. Pro yeah. That's EG Health Connect will help you. Uh, that that is Tim Eliason. He's our healthcare navigator. He's the head of EG Health Connect, and it, it's not that we're promoting it. It's available. Okay. So if you have lower income um, and you don't have health insurance. Uh, I would suggest you give Tim and his team a call because there's no charge and they will help you to get into the best health care for the lowest package uh, possible. And there are, it's called the essential plan, right? Chris? Yep, and it's through okay. New York State Department of Health and it's a great uh, opportunity. And Chris, you were, you were supposed to answer that. Not me. But you did good? I did good. Because I was, yeah, I was so call my. So call Tim at 632-7886 and he'll set up an appointment for you. And um, remember, even though uh, in, in 2018, the, pen the penalty is still in effect for not having health insurance. But more than anything, you want the coverage. And if you can get it for something reasonable, and by the way, the essential plan is a very good plan. Oh, it, it's unbelievable. It's, you know, better than some um, the ones that gold I buy platinum. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, so... 
the state of New York helps subsidize it. And so if you're somebody that doesn't have health insurance, give EG Tax, EG Health Connect a call at, at our corporate headquarters, and Tim Eliason and his group will be very happy to help you. And, and again, it's a free service. Yes. Okay? Yep. All right. All right. And then uh, 8030930, 8 star 930 cell phone is our phone number. Um, the other thing is you have rental losses. Uh, don't forget that those losses will offset your other income from businesses. So if you're looking at the, the pass through, mm -hmm. uh, so you might want to, in some cases, slow up your depreciation and you need to make an election to that effect so that you don't take the losses, especially if they're suspended. So uh, we'll help you with that. And then my number nine is if you don't have health insurance, EG Health Connect will help you. And this is that time of year when um, you can sign up for new health insurance. And of course, like we just said, uh, Tim Elison and his team will help you. Um, the other thing is if you have a pension plan at work, don't sign up for it. Huh? 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 Doesn't make any sense, does it? No. I mean, it makes no sense that I just said that. The attention. reason I said that is I need you to say, huh? Huh? <laughs> you absolutely should sign up for your health insurance, I mean, for your, your uh, pension plan at work. It's more than anything, because if you plan on not dying, you're going to wish you had a pension. But number two, if you have an employer match, you are literally throwing money out the window. Right, right. Literally throwing money out the window. Free money. That's right. So, uh, you know, that commercial on TV, I don't know if you've seen it, where it says, don't do this, don't do that, because you get spoiled if you really did the good thing. Here's the thing. If you have a pension plan at work and you don't sign up, and some of it, if, if your wages are 30000 and there's a 3% match, all you need to do is put $900 in there for you to get 900 from your employer. It's not like a big amount of money you have to put in. But it, but if you don't sign up for the pension plan and you put nothing in there, you don't get the match. Yep, and the interest, it just keeps growing and growing. Okay, Greg, right. we're going to go to Greg, right. I think. Well, we're going to go to... Greg. Let's see, Greg. Hey, Greg. Greg. Yes, uh, I'm, I've got some information on that state forum. Our... Oh. oh, good. What you got? Thank you. Oh? We're ready. What do you got? Well, it's been around for 10 years. Okay, what is it, Greg? It's called, it's called the Partial Tax Exemption for Real Property for Senior Citizens. And they take information off, the uh, state of New York takes information off your tax returns, and they add up total. And if if you're under, I'll say, if it comes out under 24000 you get a 50% off your county. And it's not the enhanced star. That's correct. It's, it's, so this is over and above the enhanced star? It's an additional program in addition to the enhanced star. And so what's the form number? RP467. It's RP467. So I'm assuming you get the form on the New York State website. The, the town of Amherst uh, mails it, mailed it to me, and um, I completed it. Wow. Well, thank that's you. great. Well, thank you for calling. Thank that's you. great information. There's uh, lines on the uh, federal tax return. I can give you the line numbers if you like. Well, no, we, no. Don't need, we don't need that right now. But the thing is, thank you for calling. And we'll, we can put that information on our website, yep. right? Yep. Yep. Right, yep. right. Yep. And I have it up on my phone. It looks like it's your income has to be between 3000 and 29000 to qualify. So, but we will investigate more during the week. Including Social Security? It doesn't say okay. right here, so give me Monday and Tuesday and I'll research it. All right, that's great. And we'll know next week. We will. Thank you for calling, Thank Greg, you, and thanks Greg. for waiting. Okay, I want to go back to my little list here. Um, if, you have, um, if you have IRAs and annuities and pensions and you have no beneficiaries, look yourself in the mirror and say, shame on you, because what will happen is they, the, it'll go to your bene it, those people that should inherit it without the option that is that they could take it over their life expectancy or a five-year period. It'll be fully taxable in the year that they inherit it. So make sure you have the proper beneficiaries on your IRAs and annuities and pension plans so that they have those options upon your death. Of, I, I you know, think, like you, you always say, it. it's just the right thing to do. Is That's what right. You, you know, and, and it do goes... A, do a will. Yep, I was just going to say it goes with your next one. Do a will. Do a will. 
It's so simple. If you don't have a will, my gosh, uh, one of my clients uh, was an attorney and t didn't do a will. Hmm. So his wife had to do all that probate stuff. Um, don't forget to do your RMDs and if, uh, in your, uh, and if you have IRAs and you have RMDs because you're age 70 and a half, we talked about this at the beginning of the show, you can avoid paying taxes. If you're somebody that likes to give money to charity, this is a way that you can do a direct rollover from your IRA to the charity and it saves you taxability, right? Yep. Completely. Yep. And then it'll help if you uh, worry about your STAR pro or your Medicare having to pay more in Medicare taxes, it's really a good idea. Okay, and then uh, the final number 14 was tax plan. You know, um, uh, you can hear that things are not easy in the world of taxes. I don't care what they say about that it got easier, it didn't get easier, especially now with the pass through. So you wanna make sure with all the changes, and I wanna tell you there's gigantic changes. This is the last quarter of the year. Give EG Tax a call. Uh, at 632-7886, and our website is egtax.com. And of course, during the week, if you wanted to sign up for our Saturday's online class, they can do it through our website too, right, Deb? Yep, absolutely. Go to egtax.com, and you click on the Saturday class. It's taught by Paul Caputo. He's a lawyer, and it's a very exciting class. It is. That's right. Until next week, I'm Esther Gullius with Tiffany Fabian, Christopher Fabian, Frank in the control room, and, um, and Jay, who answers our phone calls, we just thank everybody for everything, for participating. Thanks for calling. And until next week, I'm Esther Golias um, from EG Tax. Have a great week.